it's fun being part of this type of technology and you know the the leading edge of you know what's out there and it's it's always interesting seeing you know friends and family talk about you know all the stuff coming out that they see and it's like oh yeah it's, it's really cool this is the stuff that i get to play with on a daily basis all right hey eric can you check your crop type or variety it's fun seeing other people get excited for the stuff that I, you know, that I see, um, you know, stuff, stuff, stuff coming down the pipeline for other folks, so. Should be corn one. Uh, In the sprawling croplands of Bondurant, Iowa, a test farm run by ag equipment giant John Deere is home to some of the latest advances in precision farming systems. Here, John Deere is developing next generation technology that could help farmers double or triple their yields a feat that will be key to keeping up with global food demands as the Earth's population grows over the next 30 years. Being able to control where you put everything on a repeatable basis, I think is, the, is definitely something I know my dad's talked about with just being able to uh, control those costs, you know, because that's one thing, you know, you can't not buy your seeds, so you, you make, them, make the most of what you got. I'm gonna check this, the quality of this first row to see, make sure it's planted the way I wanted to plant. Now my seed's popping out of that bottom row, so I can tell I'm at my population, I know my back pressure's where I want it to be. I can go down and make sure all my rows are set precisely where I want to be. If you think about what's been for hundreds of years now the primary sensor on a farm, it was the farmer's eyes. What was the primary computer? It was the farmer's mind. What was the farmer's cloud? was his or her memory plus an old dirty notebook. What a farmer does with his or her eyes, we can do at a much greater level of precision with a camera and a computer at this point. Unlike traditional farming practices of the past, today's precision ag systems rely on a range of sophisticated technologies like telematics, computer vision, machine learning, and AI. The key piece for our machines is that we have a modem in our machines that moves data on and off board, and, and in both directions, by the way. So there are instructions that come onto the cab, as well as uh, data that leaves the cab. That data, as I said, works its way up through to the cloud and then down to mobile apps where they're actually using that information and can see it in real time, near real time. Um, the connectivity there is critical, and, uh, and our ability to use the latest technologies there uh, we're in a 4G, Wi-Fi kind of a telematics world today. We see 5G coming. We're using those technologies in order to get that data on and off board. There's a profitability aspect for farmers that's very important here, as well as just uh, more farming more sustainably through the use of these technologies. But I think it's, it's again, it's, it's all about the job that happens in the field. You can see where we went today, so you can track. It's evolving very, very fast, and I think it's all about smarter machines. The uh, labor shortage that uh, is for sure impacting rural America is impacting uh, rural areas all over the world. Skilled labor shortage in, in rural areas is a particularly acute problem. The value of having machines that are connected really flows back to what the needs of the customer or the farmer really are. And that is increasingly they want to know where are my machines in my operation and what work are they actually doing in the field? And then what quality, what's the quality of the work that's actually being done? They, in many cases, are operating across 10 to 15 mile radiuses for their fields and they can't be in one spot at, any, at, at every time. So they need the technology and the connectivity, as you, as you mentioned, in order to be able to see in real time what's actually happening there. Um, that's critical for their on, kind of on-the-go decision-making that they have to make. Um, for example, if a field had, it was wetter than they thought, they would have to then move that machine to another field so the work could be done. Being able to know those things real-time really matters. Machine learning applied to this machine and these applications is so critical because agriculture has so many variables that you have to deal with and so many uncontrolled variables. Um, weather changes at, at the drop of a hat, soil conditions change, each individual plant might be at a different growth stage or need something different. 
uh, deep learning and machine learning can help the machine know that, view it with a camera, process that image, and then select what material to put on, select uh, which plant to zap with herbicide and which to leave alone, um, find out where is the fungus and spray exactly that and don't spray any more than you need to. Um, for a, a deep learning scientist, this kind of problem, it's incredibly complex, but I would guess it's a lot more rewarding than trying to filter spam. The farming advances John Deere and others in the industry are working on tie into a range of issues facing today's farmers. The fact that we're seeing this happening on ha this technology advance on many fronts is actually a bonus um, for everyone involved because we can learn from what's happening on self-driving vehicles. I believe they can learn from what, from what we're doing and how we're applying automation in our world as well. Some of these issues are blatant, like the need to save farmers time and money and boost average crop yields. But others stem from more complex global concerns, like the rising demand for healthier, sustainably grown food, an uptick in extreme weather patterns, and a debilitating labor shortage across rural communities. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, this is the future. These machines have to do more and more for the farmers to deal with that labor shortage.